joining us here today. I'm very excited to introduce you to Senator Ghazala Hashmi, who is the chair of the Virginia Senate's uh, Health, uh, Education and Health Committee, and who's carrying this bill. Senator. Well, thank you so much, Katie, and thank you to all of you who are joining us here today. Really appreciate your presence and your support for this very critical item of legislation. As Katie said, I'm Senator Ghazala Hashmi, and I have the honor of representing the 15th Senatorial District, which is parts of the city of Richmond and parts of Chesterfield County, and I'm also the new chair for the Senate Committee on Education and Health. So we began this tour uh, in Charlottesville on Tuesday, and yesterday in Richmond, we delivered to the governor over 37,000 signatures on a petition from Virginians all across the Commonwealth asking the governor to sign the Right to Contraception Act. And now we're so excited to be closing out our tour, our Right to Contraception tour here in the friendly city. And it was just a, a beautiful day to arrive here and really appreciate our mayor for being here as well. I am so thankful that Mayor Reed has joined us this morning as we're calling on Governor Youngkin to enshrine the right to contraception in Virginia by signing SB 237. So this bill would protect the right to use contraceptives, and that includes condoms, the pill, uh, IUDs, as well as Plan B. And I want to thank my colleague, Delegate Sia Price, from Newport News who carried the companion bill in the House. You know, it's so unfortunate, especially for, for our young uh, women here today, it's really unfortunate that we have to be on this tour at all, especially when broad majorities all across the country, uh, broad majorities of Democrats, Republicans, and Independents absolutely believe in the fundamental right to contraception and that it should be protected. This is a right to privacy. It's a right to critical medical care. And just a few years ago, I think very few of us would have even thought that access to contraceptives would be the next battleground that we're facing in the fight for reproductive health care. And even just a few months ago, I don't think we would have thought that IVF clinics would be challenged and would be forced to pause their services because of our extremists within our court system. But as we know, this threat is very real. We've got a Supreme Court and we've got Supreme Court justices such as Virginia resident Clarence Thomas, who has clearly stated his intent in his concurrence to Dobbs that, uh, and that's the decision, of course, that overturned Roe v. Wade. Uh, at that point, Justice Thomas said, Griswold should be reconsidered. Griswold, a 1965 Supreme Court decision that in ensured the right to privacy, ensured access to contraception for married couples too. <laughs> Until that point, even married couples did not have that right to, to contraception. And so when Clarence Thomas declared that Griswold needs to be reconsidered, it is a strong signal, a clear signal, that they are coming for contraception next. And that's why I introduced this very simple yet crucial bill to create a state-level protection to guarantee the right to use contraceptives without government interference. So this bill passed the General Assembly thanks to our united Democratic majorities in both of the chambers. And we also had the support of a handful of Republicans who joined us who recognize that this legislation is critical for every Virginian. And even the Republicans who voted against the bill have started to backtrack after the news came out of Alabama and uh, understood that their constituents are rightfully concerned. So more Virginians are now engaged and want to know where elected officials stand on IVF and on contraception. And one of my colleagues even admitted that he, quote, might have misunderstood what the bill was all about when he was asked by a reporter of why he voted against it. So I'll just close by saying that contraceptives are indispensable, absolutely, to helping Virginians plan their families, but they're also used to treat so many other health issues. 
and issues such as endometriosis, polycystic ovary syndrome, and uh, fibroids, acne, a host of other issues. Access to contraception should not be a partisan issue, especially not when strong majorities across all political affiliations say that they support keeping contraceptives legal and accessible. So I'm here standing alongside so many advocates and friends and our mayor uh, for reproductive freedom. And we are absolutely asking Governor Youngkin to sign the bill. Thank you. Now it's my tremendous honor to introduce Harrisonburg Mayor Dina Reed. everyone and Senator Ashby, thank you so much for choosing to close out your tour here in Harrisonburg. Yes, we are the friendly city. Uh, and I heard that you had a good turnout in Richmond and Charlottesville as well. And we're here to call on Governor Youngkin to sign the right to the right uh, the right to contraception act. So let me start off by saying this as clearly as possible. Reproductive health care is under attack. Extremists, politicians, and judges are trying to cover up their actions by using a lot of fluff words and dancing around the topic when asked, but we have to speak the truth to power and call them out for what they are attempting to do. Control our bodies and completely restrict reproductive freedom in Virginia. Contraceptives are one of the pillars of reproductive health care. In fact, contraception is a pillar of health care, period. Whether used for family planning or for managing health conditions, uh, contraception is something the majority of people will rely on at some point in their lifetimes. So that is why, as mayor of Harrisonburg, I am putting my full support behind Senate Bill 237 and House Bill 609 the Virginia Right to Contraception Act. We cannot wait until the Supreme Court strips away the right to contraception. Virginia must continue to lead as we have before and proactively defend this right with critical state level protections. As mayor, I know what, what is at stake for my community here. Contraception bans will disproportionately hurt who are already marginalized, including people of color, immigrants, LGBTQ people, and people with low incomes. That is why we are united as community in calling on Governor Youngkin, Governor Youngkin, to sign this bill by the Monday deadline. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. And I want to thank my my EMU nursing students, because this affects them, right, mm -hmm. for being here as well. So next we have Miss Penny Blue, Virginia Program Director of Red, Wine, and Blue. Good morning. I am Penny Edwards Blue, and I am the Virginia Program Director for Red, Wine, and Blue. Red, Wine, and Blue is a community of half a million women across the United States, diverse women, that work together in communities to stamp out extremism. And one of the things that we realize uh, while we're talking to different women in Virginia is that we all have a story. And sometimes we don't even realize it until we get into conversation. For instance, my story is actually about my mother. I'm number nine of 10 children. So I'm from Franklin County, Virginia. And during that time, that is the norm of, of, of the amount of children in that environment. Because I know families with 13, 15, and 20 children. And even though I know that my mother loved each and every one of her children, and I had a beautiful childhood, and she was very proud of the family that she was able to build with my dad. She also rejoiced that her seven daughters and granddaughters had access to birth control, which gave them 
more autonomy and um, act and, and more control with regard to what they did with their lives. So we are here today. Uh, we met in Richmond with Senator Hodgman yesterday and others and delivered over 37,000 signatures on a petition from women all across Virginia asking the governor to sign this bill. And we find it critical and very important with regard to our health and our control of our own bodies and our future. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce Sarah Goodman. Sarah is with Red, Wine, and Blue also, and she is the Southwest organizer for Red, Wine, and Blue. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah Goodman. Thank you, Senator Hodgman, for allowing me to be part of this tour. Um, I came here this morning from Roanoke because this is so important to me. The Right to Contraceptive and Conception Act is absolutely critical. Um, I have two grown sons, one of whom Actually, the youngest is here at JMU as a freshman this year. Um, I'm so proud of my sons. But the fact is that if I had not had access to birth control, I might not have been around to raise them. Um, I had two very difficult pregnancies, both of which ended in cesarean sections, emergency cesarean sections, in spite of my own desire to have natural childbirth. And after the second, um, Cesarean section, which was you know, a very traumatic experience for everyone in that operating room. Um, my doctor came to me and she said, Sarah, 100 years ago, you would have been one of those women who died in childbirth. And I cannot recommend that you undertake the risk of another pregnancy again because you don't want to go. And that was so sobering to me. Here I am with my, my new infant and my toddler son with his new baby brother. So, you know, birth control, it's not um, something that's extra or frivolous. It is absolutely critical to women's health care. Uh, that was in 2005, and then flash forward to 2012, when the Affordable Care Act made birth control um, available at no cost. And I was thrilled when that happened at that time. I was now a single mother taking care of two boys, trying to live on a teacher's salary. So it was fabulous news, for one thing for my budget, but for another, just to have that news, I remember thinking at the time that those policymakers were truly valuing women and valuing women's health care with that decision. And it, it was so important to me then. It's important to me now. And that's why I'm so grateful to Senator Hashmi and the other patrons of the Right to Contraception Act for putting this forward. They are standing up for women, for women's health care, for all health care in Virginia. And I urge Governor Youngkin to do the same. Thank you. Let's see if we can take any questions from press. I guess if I had to ask one, um, are you expecting any pushback from Young himself on, on this bill leading up to it? So uh, halfway through the session, this past session, uh, I had uh, a visit from uh, three emissaries from the governor's administration, uh, individuals who didn't really want to relay the news because they themselves uh, understand the value of contraception. Uh, but what they shared is that the governor is uh, planning to oppose the legislation. And this was halfway through the session. Uh, I didn't hear anything at the end when both of the bills emerged out of the General Assembly and were delivered to the governor's desk. I haven't heard from the governor at all. My question back to him would be, uh, what possible uh, reason does he have to oppose a right to contraception? which is a right that we have enjoyed for close to 60 years in this country. Uh, and it's uh, the fact that it's being challenged now by some extreme, uh, very extremist voices. Um, that idea is being, uh, it's just baffling to everybody else in the, in the world uh, where access to contraception is taken for granted. 
and in many countries, contraception is provided free of charge uh, with the understanding of its medical values, the tremendous value it has in family planning, and uh, the kind of necessary need it is for just about every society at this point. Uh, so why would you not sign the bill is my question back to the government. Questions? We could also do one on one with both Lauren. All right, thank you all. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>